Hello again, and welcome to a Hobby Electronics Mega Channel video tutorial two-part series on flashing and lighting LEDs with multivibrator circuits. We will be building and stepping through both A-stable and mono-stable multivibrator circuits. The concepts here are not difficult to understand, it just takes some time and experimentation. Two of the best ingredients for learning about electronic circuits. Hopefully these demonstrations will entertain and lead you to further experimentation. I got the idea to make this tutorial when I saw some do-it-yourself soldering projects the other day where you make little flashing LED trinkets. And I thought that might be a good way to introduce these circuits and then springboard to a series on the 555 timer. We're going to be doing some pretty cool stuff with that IC in the very near future. In the meantime, as with any hobby electronics project, safety is number one. Though the voltages and currents we will be using are extremely low and pose no danger, aside from damaging components, I urge you to check these two websites, shown on your screen, for safety tips when working with electronics. The information there is highly useful. In this two-part video tutorial, we will need some electronics components. You may have these already, but if not, they can be found at various online sources such as eBay, Amazon, Digikey.com, and Mouser.com to name a few. Here's what you'll need. Two 470 ohm resistors, two 47k ohm resistors, four 10k ohm resistors, one 100k ohm resistor, one 100 ohm resistor, four 2N3904 NPN transistors, two 22 microfarad electrolytic capacitors, one 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitor, one 100 nanofarad ceramic capacitor, one 1N4001 or equivalent diode, three standard LEDs, any color, one tactile push button, a 9 volt battery, lots of jumper wire, you can buy the uh, wire pre-stripped or make your own, and of course a breadboard, preferably a large breadboard for this series with at least 2,000 tie-in points. This is not required but it does make positioning the components a lot easier. If you want to follow along with some modifications I'm going to make at the end of the two-part series, you'll need some additional components that you see on screen. It always helps to have extra electronic stuff handy. You'll need some tools for building these circuits as well. A pair of needle nose pliers, wire cutters, and a multimeter. Let's start with the monostable multivibrator circuit. Here's the schematic for this circuit. Essentially what this circuit does is it takes an input in the form of a negative pulse and generates a high output for a very specific duration of time. This duration is determined by the size of a capacitor and a resistor in the circuit. These values can be changed to alter the duration of the high output pulse. First, let's build the circuit. Start by placing two of the transistors as you see on the screen. I've marked them so it should be very clear where the collector, emitter, and base pins are situated. In this circuit, the transistors are being used as switches to allow current to flow between the collector and emitter pins when the base pin receives enough current. Next, place two 10K ohm resistors, the outside ones on screen, and the 100K ohm resistor, the middle one, as shown. Moving on, let's place the 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitor as you see on screen being sure to observe polarity. As in all my tutorials, I will mark with a red dot the holes where components should be placed on the breadboard. And in cases like this one, where polarity is a concern, positive will be marked in red and negative in blue. It's particularly important to get the polarity right with capacitors as they can literally explode if they're wired in backwards. Now place a 10K ohm resistor, as you see in the photo. Next, we will wire one end of that resistor to the base of the left transistor. 
and now wire the negative end of the capacitor to the base of the right transistor, as shown on screen. Moving right along, let's wire the positive end of the capacitor to the collector of the left transistor, and then the collector of the right transistor to the hole shown on screen. Moving down the breadboard a bit, wire another 10K ohm resistor as you see in the photo. Next comes the diode. Here again, we want to get the polarity right, so make sure you wire it in correctly. The diode in this case is acting as a valve, allowing electron flow one way, but not the other. This diode's negative lead is marked by a small gray band. Now we'll wire in the ceramic capacitor as shown. With ceramic capacitors, polarity is not a concern. The push button comes next. Your push button likely has four leads as this one does. The two leads on either side of the button are wired together internally, so you want to make sure those connected leads line up with the buses on the breadboard. Otherwise, you'll be shorting the two connections of the button together. I haven't found a really good way to tell which is which, so it's a good idea to use a multimeter to test your button's leads before using it. Now let's wire in the final 10K ohm resistor. This will ensure that the input from the button stays high until we press it and force it low. Now let's connect the right lead of the button to the ceramic capacitor as shown, and then the left side of the button to ground. Now when the button is pressed, it will send a brief negative pulse through the 100 nanofarad capacitor. Let's now wire in an LED as shown, observing polarity of course. This LED will be the output of the circuit, lighting up for a specific duration of time when the button is pressed. Finally, wire in the 100 ohm resistor. It's difficult to see the resistor in this photo, but you can use the red dots to see where its leads get connected. Great! The monostable multivibrator circuit is built. I know you're anxious to test it out now, so if you want, go ahead and connect your 9 volt battery to the circuit and press the button. It should light up for about 1.1 seconds, then go dark. Repeated button presses will produce the same result. Pretty cool, huh? Now let's step through the chain of events that occurs when power is applied in this circuit, as displayed on the monostable multivibrator schematic. When power is applied to the circuit, the base of Q2, the right-hand transistor, is connected to power through RT, the timing resistor, turning it on. This ensures that Q1, the left-hand transistor, stays off because all current passing through R2 is shooting straight through Q2 to ground, and none is going through R3. Remember, electricity always takes the path of least resistance. Thus, no current is being supplied to Q1's base. This is the stable state, state 1, of the circuit. Now, when a negative trigger pulse is applied at the input by pressing the button, it causes a quick positive pulse to pass from C1, the ceramic capacitor, to Q1's base via the diode, immediately turning it on. Current now flows very quickly from CT's left plate, CT is the timing capacitor, through Q1 and to ground. The sudden voltage drop on CT forces its right plate to try to equalize the drop by pulling current through RT, the timing resistor. RT no longer supplies current to the base of Q2, causing it to turn off. This is the circuit's second unstable state. Because Q2 is now off, current now flows through R2 to the output, supplying the timed pulse, and through R3 to the base of Q1, keeping it turned on. The LED at the output lights up. Remember that CT has just experienced an abrupt voltage drop 
and its right plate is pulling current through RT. This is where the timer comes from in this circuit. The duration of the pulse is related directly to how long it takes the right plate of CT to charge via RT. Once the voltage of CT's right plate is around 0.6 volts, it no longer pulls current through RT, and that current is then passed to the base of Q2. Q2 begins to conduct, and at that point is turned on. No current can pass from R2 through R3 anymore, turning Q1 off. CT's right plate charges up again, and the circuit is now back in its stable state, waiting for the button to be pressed again. With a timing capacitor size of 10 microfarads and timing resistor size of 100k ohms, the duration of the output pulse should be about 1.1 seconds. If you've wired the circuit correctly, your results should match what you're seeing on screen. Clearly, this circuit has some very practical applications in hobby electronics. You can use it to apply power to another circuit for a specific amount of time, for example, an alarm or a motorized demonstration, or anything that needs an input to begin and a particular duration to run. Tinker around with this circuit and try different capacitor and resistor sizes for CT and RT to get different pulse durations. Another idea is to try powering something other than an LED, like, for example, a small speaker. Thank you for watching the first of this two-part tutorial on multivibrator circuits. I hope it's piqued your interest and gives you some ideas for building your own circuits. In the second part, we'll be looking at the A-stable multivibrator circuit, which oscillates between two states indefinitely. Until then, I wish you all the best in your hobby electronics journey. I'm Dylan Z. So long for now.